I want to read a quote to you from, uh, from the forum, a friend of mine who wrote this on the forum. We had this discussion, a long discussion in a thread about living for the future, uh, so future security versus uh, living for future ha present happiness. And this is what a friend of mine wrote. Now, he just said it so well, I can't, I can't do better, and I want you to read it, hear it. For me, this is my friend talking, it came down to the choice of living a life I wasn't enjoying but with a certain amount of safety, or living a life I love without a safety net. Very simple choice. A, a life you're not enjoying, no safety net. A life that you don't enjoy to create a safety net. I chose the latter, a life without a safety net. Because even if something bad or even life ending happen, happened, I would have had that time living the way I wanted. And this is the all important question he asks, what's the point of prolonging a life I'm not enjoying? If you're not enjoying life, why not? What's the purpose? Why are you here on this planet? To have a good 20 years from 65 on? That's your reason to be alive on this planet? Your whole reason? Not to enjoy this now, not to see places like this and go do things like this? What's the point of prolonging a life I'm not enjoying? Besides, I think safety is mostly an illusion. It is 100% an illusion. Shit happens to building dwellers. They get sick, they go broke, they get swindled, their homes break down or burn up or get destroyed in natural disasters, but they feel safe because it's the way most people live. They're following the norm and so they feel safe. Everyone else is doing it this way, this must be the right way, I'm gonna live this way. They're doing the normal thing, the familiar thing, so it must be the best choice. It's not, it's the worst choice. The safe choice. I think danger is also mostly an illusion. I, I just, I love what he's saying here. What's the point of prolonging a life I'm not enjoying? Safety is an illusion. It's not there where no matter where you live or how you live. I think danger is also an illusion. It is. Most of the fears you have about your life, especially as a nomad, are, are just totally an illusion. No reality to them at all. We convince ourselves of all sorts of things might happen to us, but they never do. Not because of our vigilance, but because they were never going to happen to us no matter what. Since the mobile life is unfamiliar, we can convince ourselves those are even more dangerous it's even more dangerous out there, waiting to get us. They aren't more dangerous, just different ones. There's not more danger, they're just slightly different. Uh, how many, I know so many people who, uh, who lived uh, for the future. My father, he lived at a job, he worked at a job he didn't like all his life. He, uh, he got his w weekends off, he got his vacation time, he took his vacations, he dreamed and lived for the future at a job he didn't like, working with people he didn't really like, buying things he didn't really want. And so when he retired at 60, he was dead at 62. He never enjoyed a moment. And you say, well, that's so rare. No, it's not. It's a common story I hear all the time. If you're not dead at 60, your health is declining at 60. By 70, nearly all men are into serious health decline. You're looking, if you retire at 60, 65, uh, by 70, 75, you maybe have 10 good years of retirement, 15 at the most. Nearly all the men I know at 70 and 75, ha if their health isn't in decline, it probably is, their vitality is greatly reduced. Your ability to enjoy the golden years you've created is so low. By 80, virtually no men are out enjoying the golden years. They're enduring until they die. So the question remains, What's the point of prolonging a life you don't enjoy? How much better to create a life that you love, that you enjoy? Let's just think about the math. This is simple math. 60 years of unpleasant life to gain a pipe dream of 20 really good golden years. That's the, and that's a pipe dream. It's not gonna happen. You are, your health is declining. I'm 60. I don't have the vitality, I don't have the youth, I can't walk as far, I can't enjoy the time I have. By 70, I expect it to be drastically diminished from what it is now. So you're trading 60 years for possibly 10 years. 
That's terrible math. I can't understand how anybody believes that's a good deal. But they do because they've been brainwashed into believing it. There's just nothing else to it. From the moment you go to school, you're trained to think this way. Every minute of your life, you're trained to think, plan for the future, plan for the future. Now ask yourself this, who wins in that scenario? Why is society so dead set on you planning for your future and having an unpleasant life today? I'll tell you who wins, the corporations win. They get a workhorse, a slave, that you work all your life, you go to work, you go to your cubicle, you go to McDonald's, and that's where you're going now. You're going to McDonald's, uh, and you slave away, and then you listen to the commercials, and you go out and you buy a bunch of their crap, and they get rich. The corporations get rich, you work yourself to death, and then at 60, they put you out to pasture. Now, at least at one time, uh, they used to feed you and take really good care of you after 60 with a pension, with Social Security. Those are gone. So this pipe, it's not only a pipe dream, it's a, not only is it terrible math and a terrible trade to live at a life you don't enjoy for a life that you will like, a very short life that you'll like, 40, 60 years of life you don't like for 20, possibly, maybe 20 years that you will like. What's well, terrible math? But now the 20 years that you will love is gone. You're not getting a pension. Maybe you're saving a little towards a 401k or, or a IRA, maybe, probably not. You're probably living paycheck to paycheck with no future. All you're gonna have is when you die is social security. So here's what, here's what the plan is in 2016 for you. This is what your peop these people are preaching me and tell, uh, to me and say, no, you gotta tell people to work the normal. Work until they're ready to die and then live being happy. So that plan now is work hard, really hard, and then when you get old, there won't be anything. You'll be just as miserable as you would be if you had not planned, because there are no pensions, they're gone. Who gives a pension anymore? Uh, and how many pensions were, were promised and then pulled out from under people and they never got it, starting in 2008 with the economic collapse? And since then, they just simply don't offer pensions. They're virtually gone. There's very few pensions that you can get. Uh, Social Security, now you're working minimum wage jobs for very little money. You're building, not building up Social Security. Most of us, by the time we get to, uh, we're not none of us have savings because we're all living on such low wage jobs. By the time we get to retirement, we're not gonna have anything. So, if there's not gonna be anything there, if the golden years are gonna be terrible, enjoy the crap out of your youth. Go out there and grab life by the balls and enjoy it. So if, if the future is grim anyway, live your life to the fullest today. Go out and see stuff like this. I bought my first van for $1,500 and moved in. You can do that too. Uh, you do have to have an emergency fund. You do have to have a way to make money. And I'm, that's what this series is gonna be about. I'm gonna tell you all about jobs you can have and to work at this, to do this. But go ahead and do it. There are several things you're going to gain by doing it. First, you'll never be homeless. You eliminate your most expensive costs so that when times are bad and there's not much money coming in, you'll have a home. You'll never be homeless if you live in a van or an RV. Uh, you'll learn how to live super cheap. So in your old age, when you don't have much money, that's normal. You know how to live dirt cheap. You've learned how by a life of adventure and travel and seeing things like this. Go out there and do this. So I think you have everything to gain and almost nothing to lose. Uh, a few of you will get in jobs where you can build up a, uh, and get big money and build up a 401k and get a pension, not many. Uh, so it's your choice, but I'm telling you, there are reasons why I think you should do this and I think there are very good reasons and having presented them to you, I, it's just up for you to choose. But I am giving you the choice. I'm showing you what my thinking is and what their thinking is and you can make your own choice. Now, I love quotes. I, I love, I dearly love quotes, and I want to give you some quotes just because I love them so much. Uh, the first quote I want to give you is from Jack London. Jack London died at 40 of, an, of a disease. He wrote um, uh, Call of the Wild and uh, a White Fang. He was an incredibly prolific writer. You, you've read a lot of his stuff uh, and heard of him, at least. And he, he lived an incredible life. He was literally a hobo. He was literally uh, rode the rails and, and, and rode around the country. He, was, uh, he worked on a shrimp boat and went to sea. Uh, he lived an unbelievably full life. And when he died at 40, 
of, of a disease, because this was in the 1940s, was born at the turn of, born at the, turn of the century. Um, he had lived a full life and he had no regrets about a minute of his life. So here's what, a quote that I, from him that I love. No one's sure it's from him, but it's, um, it's almost universally attributed to him. I would re rather be ashes than dust. Good, simple choice. You want to be ashes or do you want to be dust? I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. Do you want to rot away in life, in a job, in a life you hate, or do you want to just be a glowing blaze of glory that, that everyone looks at your life and say, wow, I wish I'd lived like that. I would rather be a superb meteor, every atom of me in a magnificent glow, than a sleepy and permanent planet. The function of a man is to live, not exist. The function of a human is to live, not to barely exist, not to get by, not to go to a, a soul-sucking, mundane, life of drudgery job for 60 years and then retire. That's not the cause, that's not the reason you were born. You never thought that as a child. This is how I want to live my life. I shall not might waste my days trying to prolong them. I beg you, don't waste your days trying to prolong them. Live your days to the fullest, enjoying them to the utmost. I shall use my time. And I just love that quote from Jack London. Now, another quote that I love, another quote that I love is from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Who is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross? She is a woman who studied death and dying her entire life. She devoted herself to it. Uh, she was the person who came up with the five stages of grief. That's her theory. Now, she changed the world. With her studies of death and uh, looking at and learning about the five stages of grief, she changed the world. Well, when you, when you spend your lifetime, and she literally spent her lifetime at the bedside of the dying, at, with, the, with the grieving family. That's how she lived her life. It was just in her heart, and it was a calling she had. Some people have that calling. Uh, and so she did that. And she learned so many lessons. The dying teach us how to live. You want to know how to live? Talk to a dying person. That person will tell you his regrets, the things he did right, the things he did wrong, the things he would oh so much like to change about his life. And this is the conclusion that she reached about how to live. This is the conclusion she reached about how to live. It is very important that you only do what you love. Do you love going to work? Do you love the traffic, the grind, the monotony? It is very important that you only do what you love. You may be poor. You may be. You may go hungry. It's possible. You may lose your car. You may have to move into a shabby place to live. I live in a van. Some people would say I live in a shabby place to live. But you will totally live. Think about that. Live today to its fullest, grabbing life by its balls and living fully. Wow, to me that's, this is just a no-brainer. I don't understand how anyone can even debate this. And at the end of your days, you will bless your life because you have done what you came here to do. Whatever your purpose on life is, whatever your choices in life is, you lived it. You didn't dream about it. You didn't think about it. You didn't wish, oh, if only I could live a better life. You did it. You lived the best life for you, a genuine, authentic life for you. And nothing that society tells you to do is genuine and authentic. It has to come from the inside of you out. It can't come from the outside in. Otherwise, you will live your life as a prostitute. I've given that sentence a lot of thought. You will live your life as a prostitute. You will do things for a reason, to please other people. You're living your life to please the people who, who filled you full of propaganda. Most of us are. We don't, have, we don't know we are. We would insist that we are not. That's not true. I'm not living my life for someone else. I'm not living my life because of propaganda. But you are. You're living your, what, the life you live is because someone else told you to live it. It's not your choice. You would never choose this life. Not in the right mind. You will do things for a reason to please other people and you will never have lived. This is a woman who has been at the bedside of thousands of dying people. And this is the message she heard from them over and over again. None of them ever regretted not going to work more often and making more money. 
No one on their deathbed says, I wish I'd gone to the office one more day or another hour every day. I wish I'd spent one more day just making money. I wish my 401k was bigger now that I'm dying. Uh, no one has ever said that. I just can't imagine that any person, sane person would ever say that. You will never have lived and you will not have a pleasant death. I live my life so I'll have a pleasant death. On the day of my death, the moments, I will look back at my life and say, wow, I had a great life. Maybe it was a little rough here at the end, but man, what a life I've had. And the memories and the feelings that I have created in my life, they got me through all the rough spots. And you know what? The rough spots were actually the best spots. I, I remember them with the most fondness and the most memories and the most smiles. Look back on your life. The rough times are the ones you remember with the biggest smile. That you love to get to about together with your friends and say, remember that time we, and it was some disaster that occurred to you. You loved it. It was, it was a joy. Adventure is good for your soul. So I love those two quotes and I hope they, they have an impact on you. I guide my life by them. I guide my life by the wisdom of Jack London because he set an example I want to follow. And of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who spent so many times, so many hours at the deathbed of people as they died. And so uh, I follow my, uh, the, the life I try to live is based on the, the old uh, Lakota saying, today is a good day to die. I have lived so fully. My life has been so rich that if this is my last day on this here, on this earth, let it come. I'm delighted. I'm happy with my life. And if this is it, I'd like to have more. I'd like to get all I can. But man, I've lived well. Wouldn't you like to live well? So it's your choice. I'm not, uh, I've, I have presented the side that I think is best and, 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 and in the best way I can, but it's your choice. Now, uh, we're going to talk about jobs. You're going to have to get a job. I've never in any way implied that you don't have to get a job as a nomad. You need money. In this world, you need money. The best thing to do then is to get the jobs, uh, uh, work as little as you can, uh, live as, learn to live as cheap as you can. Here's my recommendations for finding a balance between the two, between not any thinking for the future and only thinking for the future. Both are equally wrong. Get your jobs. Make sure you get a job that's building social security. Uh, will it be here when you're older? I don't know. Let's assume it will be. That's the best you can do. At all your jobs, pay yourself the first 10%. Uh, the first 10% of your check, the gross of your check, goes into a 401k or an IRA or an emergency fund. You build up an emergency fund of cash. You gotta have an emergency fund of cash. But the rest of it, to 10%, every year for the rest of your life, and this is a good balance. This is a balance I'm trying to find for us. You can have security for the future and a wonderful life today. So you work six months out of the year, you draw unemployment six months out of the year, you always put 10% of every penny towards security of the future. First, with a building up a cash emergency fund, cash in the bank or however you want to do it, that's your choice, I don't know the best answer for you, you'll have to figure it out. Uh, and uh, a IRA 401k, conservative, plan for the future, uh, you don't want to wipe out with the downturn. So I think that's the best balance. The third step is gain skills. Most of us are, are so, this is a world of specialization. And all we do is the one thing we were taught to do. And so few of us are taught to do anything that we end up flipping burgers at McDonald's. Nothing wrong with flipping at burgers at McDonald's, but learn a skill. Uh, and I can't tell you what your skills should be. Uh, it could be the internet, it could be writing, it could be blogging, it could be making YouTube videos. Gain a marketable skill. Take, go to classes, take classes, learn, and then do on, do on the job. Take classes, find a job in it. Uh, become an electrician, become uh, a rafting guide. Uh, learn how to do arts and crafts. Make, find a marketable skill that you can take into your old age. So that, yes, maybe you will have to work until you're old, but you have gained a marketable skill along the way that you can do when you're old. So those three things are what I think are a compromise between living fully in the moment. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to have work. You can't live fully in the moment uh, 30, 365 days a year. Half the year, you're gonna have to work, probably, for most of us. Maybe if you live really cheaply, maybe only a quarter of the year. At any rate, uh, build up for the future and live for today both. Find a balance. That's our, any, all of your best solution. 
So there you have it. Uh, uh, I, I really believe that there is an, a good life for you. And the question, the answer to the question, how can I afford to be a nomad living in an RV or living in a van or living in a Prius or a car or in an SUV? The answer is, how can you afford not to? So in our next few videos, we'll look at jobs and I'll, I'll tell you about all, there's a lot of jobs that you can enjoy. That's the best solution of all. Find a job that you both enjoy and uh, builds up for the future. So come back to our next video. Until then, like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you on our next